Welcome back to some antics. Today I am joined by the one and only Lindsay Wardell. Lindsay, welcome to the stream. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to to have you. Uh, we I guess met through the Lunch Dev Discord, which I'll have to put a, a link to in the uh, in in the chat already. But um, yeah, uh, you you recently joined. We've had the pleasure of chatting a couple times. I'm super super excited to have you on. Um, for folks who haven't seen you uh, around, haven't gotten to meet you yet, um, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Lindsay Wardell. I'm in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I am an engineer at No Red Inc., which is a learning platform for middle and high schoolers to learn English and writing skills. Uh, by the way, we are hiring. And I also participate on the podcast Views on View and do a little bit of blogging and a little bit of talking on Twitter. Uh, that's that's kind of my public face. I'll, I'll also throw in I enjoy biking and I enjoy coding. Long walks ag along the beach and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm excited to have you on. I'm excited about today's topic, which is Elm. Um, to tell you the truth, Lindsay, I feel uh, a little out of my wheelhouse here. It's been, you know, a while since I've learned a, a new language properly. I'm not really counting TypeScript here because TypeScript is a, a superset of JavaScript. But it's been a while since I've learned any new languages like this. And so um, I guess b before we really dive into what it is we're doing today, um, can you kind of talk to us about, like, what is Elm and why might someone use Elm over alternatives? Sure. So at its core, Elm is a functional programming language. The, the tagline on the Elm website is that it's a delightful language for building reliable web apps. The, the main issue that we as JavaScript developers get into is that JavaScript is, what's the right way to put it? It has, it has some flaws, it has some issues, and that's partly to do with why it was originally created. Uh, but when you're building a large scale application, something using React or Vue or whatever framework of the day you want to choose, you run into certain issues over and over again. Things like undefined is not a function, cannot read null of undefined. Uh, you're, you're not able to rely on the code that you write, even with all of the testing in place, because something could go wrong. And something is data coming in from an API, it's data, it could be uh, the user gave some input that you weren't expecting. It's possible to get into impossible situations uh, just that much easier in JavaScript. Where Elm really shines is that it is a language that is designed for building reliable web apps from the start. So what some of the guarantees with Elm is you will almost never see a runtime exception. Uh, if your code is able to compile and it is able to run, it will not crash on the client side. You will not have an undefined is not a function. Uh, Elm actually doesn't even have a concept of undefined or null. Um, Whoa. Some of the other guarantees are that when you're making an HTTP request, for example, something very common in JavaScript apps, that data that comes back has to be parsed from a JSON object, which Elm doesn't even really recognize JSON as a, as a type. It's just when you get an HTTP request, you can say you're expecting JSON and then parse it into the data type that you're expecting within Elm. So if you're, you don't get the JSON back that you're expecting, it will go into a, an error state and you'll have to handle that error saying the server returns something wrong. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Um, rather than, even if you're using TypeScript, uh, you can say that the HD, let's say you're using fetch, await fetch, and then you do uh, res.json on it. You can type that in TypeScript and say, I expect this data to be in this type structure and start acting on it. But there's nothing actually guaranteeing that that data is that type. So mm. that's where some of Elm's guarantees come in, that the data you're getting is actually what you expect. And rather than it being uh, a framework or a library on top of JavaScript, it's a full language. So it's there's complete control over the ecosystem. There's complete control over how the language is structured and how the code is written so that at the end of the day you have an application that is as reliable as you expect it to be. Gotcha. And that I, I think that's really interesting that, that you call it out in comparison to TypeScript because my experience with TypeScript, like first of all, TypeScript has I think more escape hatches than the marketing would lead you to believe. <laughs> but 
like TypeScript also has kind of this constraint that they've started with, which is that they are a superset of JavaScript. So ultimately, right. everything is kind of bolted on to JavaScript syntax, right? It's JavaScript plus the closest way the TypeScript could get to what it is they wanted to get to um, in that syntax. Whereas Elm is a blank slate, right? Right. So Elm, Elm does compile to JavaScript. Uh, its compiler is written in Haskell uh, and turns the Elm code into JavaScript. But it's not reliant on how JavaScript does things or how JavaScript allows for any data to be any type at any time. Uh, and you're right, TypeScript has a lot of escape hatches. There's the any type, there's the unknown type. Uh, and there's the fact that the web APIs, sometimes you just can't control what comes out of them. Mm. Uh, fetch is a good example. JSON.parse is another example. It's, you just can't anticipate what's going to happen. Whereas with Elm, because it is a compiled language, uh, you're able to do that static analysis of all of my data is the type that I'm expecting and nothing is going to happen that I don't anticipate. Uh, obviously, with all of this, business logic can still be wrong. Uh, Elm doesn't suddenly make you a, a 10x developer, whatever that means. But you have some strong guarantees and reassurances as you're writing the code that everything works as expected. Gotcha. OK. Um, yeah, so I'd love to start diving into what we're doing. Is there any like more you wanted to say about Elm before we start? Um, kind of showing some some code and diving in. No, let's dive into the code. Cool. We'll talk about it as we go. Awesome. Um, so we are now looking at my screen. Um, I am showing Lindsay's Twitter. Y'all go follow her on Twitter. Um, go go show her the semantics love. Um, she is at Lindsay K Wardle on on Twitter. Um, yeah. So you sent me ahead of time. You've got this template uh, that that we're going to be using. Uh, can you kind of talk about this template a bit? Yeah, so coming from the Vue ecosystem, I'm a big fan of the, the V developer tool. And one of the nice things about how Elm is written is there's integrations into all of these different bundlers. Um, so there's there's one for Webpack, there's one for Rollup. Uh, it's actually built into Parcel. So if you're using Parcel for your bundling, you can just import Elm files automatically. Oh, dang. Uh, but I really like V. So I put this template together as a baseline if you wanted to start an Elm application using Veet and get the benefits of the Veet ecosystem, you can just start with this template and start writing uh, Elm code pretty easily. Uh, some of the nice features of the template itself is the, the Elm plugin provides hot module reload. Uh, so if you're working on an Elm module, it will try to hot reload uh, if it can. Obviously, if it can't, it'll just refresh the page. Um, also comes with some built-in examples of tests using the Elm test library. and uh, uses the GitHub workflow to enable that whenever you do a commit, so it'll run the test for you, which is kind of fun. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the basics of it. I love Veet. You should go check out Veet if you're not using it. We had um, an episode a while back with uh, Anthony, who's in the, the chat today. Um, let me get a link to that in uh the the chat there uh yeah so we're we're gonna go ahead and use this i'll just use this handy green um uh use this template button here and we're going to find my semantics of uh should i call this anything in particular or is like introduction to elm good enough or it should be fine cool. I, I don't think there's anything specific we need all right uh and let's go ahead and make that public and do i need to include all branches or nah Nah. Cool. All right. In that case, uh, here's already a link to our uh, repo that we'll be playing with. So uh, after all of this is done, you'll be able to find the, the source code in here. Uh, very cool. And let me go ahead and clone this down. Sounds good. While you're doing that, I'll, I'll make one more comment. The, the template also includes a, a package from NPM called Elm Tooling. Uh, because Elm is its own language, typically you would have to install Elm itself onto your machine. Elm Tooling does that for you, so it will bring the Elm uh, language itself and a couple of different oh. tools okay. so that everything is in place for your repository, which is really nice. Interesting, because like if you're writing Python code, you have to install the like Python binary and everything like that. This is right. just it's part of the repo configuration. 
is it will pull wow interesting okay very very neat so i've i've got the code um and so should i i'm just going to peek at the package json that seems like a, a good yeah. place to to start ooh my oh actually it i just i should, probably should not have dismissed that but um okay, yeah, okay. We, we can get back to it and so i see you've got post you've got post install you've got dev prebuild build, serve, and test. Okay, so I'm just going to install my dependencies? Yep. And we'll see here, because it's in the post install, uh, once everything is in place, Elm Pool then will do its thing, and it'll bring Elm, Elm Format, Elm JSON, and Elm Test RS. Uh, Elm itself is the Elm language. Elm Format is, think of it as prettier. Okay. Uh, Unlike in JavaScript, where you can kind of debate what styling and formatting is best, whether you should use semicolons or not, or something like that, uh, Elm has an official style guide, mm. and Elm format just enforces it, which is nice. Very cool. Uh, Elm JSON, we don't need to worry about. It's, it's for updating dependencies and installing dependencies. And Elm test RS is the Elm test runner written in Rust. Got it. Okay. Very neat. So yeah, that is... It as far as installing, we should just be able to run npm run dev and get our dev server up and running. Let's do it. And localhost 3000, I have to go manually open this in my browser of choice because otherwise it will pop up off screen. Uh, Something is hogging my uh, memory resources. Oh, couldn't no. be any. Couldn't be any piece of the the whole streaming setup. Couldn't be any no, of that. No, um. There we go. Okay. And there you go. Nice. By the way, so, lovely work on the logo. Elm has a great logo. Uh, one of the nice things is the community will take that logo and convert it into different shapes. Okay. Uh, for different things. So, like, there's a an Elm Weekly newsletter that has turned it into the shape of a heart. Nice. Fun things like that. You just got in and, and basically used the beat color schemes. I love it. Uh, let's see. And then, this so this is all being rendered by uh, Elm. So the count is just incrementing, and it shows you how we can edit the main.elm file to auto-refresh. Before you move on, if you see in the bottom right corner, there's that uh, counter that's been ticking up. Uh, click on that. Okay. Uh, Whoa, what's this? like with... Just like with something like Redux or Vuex, uh, Elm allows for time traveling debugging. Okay. So we okay. Can, we can go backward and forward in time, and see what the state of our application is in and what caused it to change. So in this case, we're sending a message of increment to our, uh, which is then incrementing the model uh, by one number at a time. Wow, that's just all so. built into Elm. You said. It is, it is built into the template. Uh, the V oh, okay. plugin for Elm brings this in as long as you're in development mode. Okay. Um, but it's available across different development models. So if you're using Webpack, I think if you're using Parcel, it's there too. There's there's lots of ways to get this. But it's it's one of the really nice features um, if you're mm -hmm. trying to figure out what's going on, what state is my application in, things like that. Oof. Uh, someone's asking about our, our sound. Um... We we were trying to debug the the sound ahead of time. Let us know if that's an improvement at all. We we've been having sound issues uh, a bit. Um, sorry, I I don't know if this helps. If that's made it worse, let me know. But um, yeah, I I don't know that we're gonna get much better in real time. Uh, someone has mentioned, hey, uh, we should click the logo on the Elmlang site. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. It rearranges. Nice. It's very cute. Um, Asinka, please let us know if that uh, if that helped at all. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. So we have. Keep talking to to validate that. Yeah. Uh, would be a good call. So yeah. So this is a basic template. Um, let's go to the code. Let's let's leave the server running uh, so we can see things happen live. But let's stick in the code for a little bit. In the in the template itself, if you open up source, you will see three different files. Uh, we've got a hello world, a main.elm, and a message.elm. We're actually going to delete the hello world and message as we get started here. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to look at them real quick uh, as examples. 
then so here is the hello world module i probably case, i probably should have installed that elm yeah, plugin yeah, we need the extension yeah let's do that so it's up if you type in elm it's the second extension not the first one this one that looks like it's got the like little wrench yes okay uh, so that is made uh as part of elm tooling and that mm. will integrate uh, all of the lovely things that we need including some uh code highlighting okay it's uh it's installing and something something here is thinking hard about uh what it wants to do for us let me shut down discord see if that helps at all all right wow something's chugging shut down opera as well i guess see if that helps yes. uh technotone thank you so much for the follow appreciate having you um uh, this is okay uh i'm sure that this will pop in uh eventually at some opportune time um yes but in the meantime can we uh like what is what is going on here so like with many other languages um hey the code formatting uh like with many other languages you have at the top first you're declaring what this file is so we're saying module hello world exposing hello world so if you're thinking like an object or a class hello world is our public method uh is what that is saying there and the name of this file is hello world so it's module hello world uh we then have a number of imports which we will come back to later but just like with javascript or python or something you, you want to import from another file this, this is the syntax you would use for that and then hello world itself the the function uh, we'll, we'll get a little more into this, but basically what it's doing here is taking in our model, which is just a number, and then returning some HTML. So with Elm, everything is a function, and that's something to important to keep in mind. So as we're generating HTML, we're calling a function, in this case div, that takes two arguments. One is a list of attributes, and the other is a list of more HTML. Okay, so we're not providing any attributes at the moment. Correct. But because of Elm's uh, strong type system, we always need to provide the argument, even if it's going to be empty. Okay. And then we provide the list of HTML. So in this case, it's that H1, and then a couple paragraphs, and a button that increments. Okay. So just some straightforward stuff. We'll, we'll be writing something similar to this uh, in just a bit. Uh, for now, though, let's jump over to our main.elm file. Yeah, just a sec. I think I might actually be able to to help with uh some of the audio stuff. Uh, team, oh, let me cool. know. Uh, let me know if that helped at all. Uh, it. Yeah. Um, properties. Let's see. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Anyways, um, go where? Sorry, I was going to poke my microphone too. Let me know if that helps. I think I think whatever audio stuff is going on is on my end, unfortunately, and that makes it a little difficult to debug. Um, because right. again, I hear you just fine. It's uh, however audio is being passed around on the Mac. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go to main.elm. And main.elm at the moment is pretty straightforward. We have a main function, we have an update function, and a view function. We're actually going to delete everything here and just start from scratch. So go ahead and just delete it all. The first thing we need to do, like we looked at in the uh, hello world file, is we need to declare this module. So we're going to say, uh, just like it says module hello world, exposing hello world, we're going to say, in this case, module main, because that's the name of the file. Is that uh, capital? capital N. Okay. Exposing. And then we're gonna do parentheses and just say main, and we'll declare that function in just a moment. Okay. So this, uh, the next, th this oh, I would I would say is ooh, comments are apparently double hyphens. Interesting. So this is equivalent yes. to probably like module exports equals main, where main is some function, or uh, like export default main, right? So, it, it's more like the the first one. Okay. 
So you, you can also think of it as either mod module.exports or uh, export function main, and then you declare it mm. or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next thing we need to do, because as we are writing a, a web application, we need to generate some HTML. So at this point, we need to import HTML. Uh, that lowercase like this? With a, cap, uh, oh. with a capital H in this case. So yeah. all L modules start with a capital M. Oh, and okay. that's it. That's all we're going to do right now. Uh, and now let's declare our main function. So go down a couple more lines. Just type main equals, and then html.text using a capital H. And just say hello world after that. Uh, oh, space wait. quotes, hello world, sorry. Hmm. So uh, it seems like Elm has done away with the notion of just parentheses where you would expect parentheses. Yes. Um, so there are still parentheses when you need some sort of order of operations, and we'll get to a, a point where that matters. But in general, um, you don't need to do that for arguments for a function. So in this case, before we go back to the browser, what we're doing here is declaring a main module, which exposes a function called main. We are importing the HTML module so that we can do stuff with HTML. And then we are saying that main function is equal to html.txt, which itself is a function, uh, which takes a string. And then we provide the string, hello world. So if we go back to the browser now, we will see that what we have done here is render hello world to the screen. Nice. And this is just a, like, if I were to inspect this, I'm sure it's a, a text fragment is what's going on there. That's what HTML text is, I'm guessing. I believe so, yes. Looks like there's a, well, this this is probably the, the root, I'm guessing, or, or part of it, part of it. But this, right. this yeah. is what we've created. Cool. Right. So, hooray, we've written an LMAP. Congratulations. Um, so now we're going to play around a little bit more. Let's go back to the code. Maybe I my, my swipe was uh, incorrect. I did not swipe correctly. And for that, I was, oh, I was yeah. punished. All right. So first thing we're going to do is explore uh, functions a little more and play around with how we can do things with strings. So like I said, that HTML.txt, that is a function. Uh, and in this case, the argument to it is a string, which we're providing as hello world, and it returns actual HTML for the Elm uh, words, for the Elm virtual DOM to, to render out to the browser. Uh, similar to React and Vue, uh, Elm does use a virtual DOM uh, for how it works. Uh, it's very similar to how React handles things. So if the state changes, it then does a re-render of the app. Okay. Um, and similar to React, where, where React has used memo or something like that, Elm has ways to handle preventing uh, stuff from re-rendering if we don't need it to. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're not building anything that complex. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is let's just create a new function to handle our, our greet uh, needs. So let's call it greet. And you can just say greet equals, and if you just say hello world, uh, let's just start there. So if you replace hello world in our main function with greet, we will see what that does. And like this, if if just like that, okay, uh, we, we can go back to the browser. It's not going to look any different. It still says hello world. Me. Uh, what we are doing is greet is a function. So rather than thinking of everything as like variables. There you go. OK. Uh, instead of thinking of things as variables, it's important to think of things as functions. So greet is a function that returns a string, and that's all it does. Main is a function that returns some HTML, and that's all it does. Uh, well, you can add arguments to these functions, though. So let's do that with greet. Uh, instead of thinking in JavaScript terms, what we would normally do is write some parentheses and then uh, name some variables inside of the parentheses, right? Uh, in Elm, we don't need to do that. So instead of parentheses and then arguments, you just put the names of the arguments after the function name before the equals. So if we wanted to say greet and then have a variable of name, 
you just say greet name equals. Greet name equals like this, you said? Just just like that. Okay. And then, and then here... instead of hello chat, we need to say hello name. So we need to do some concatenation here. Uh, similar to JavaScript in that you can concatenate strings, as one would hope. Uh, unlike JavaScript, though, you do need two plus signs. But before you add it, I want to show off one of the cool features of Helm. Can you go to the uh, terminal? No, have the have the plus name there. That was good. Okay, okay. I just want to show off one of the features of Helm, which is the compiler being super friendly. Ooh, okay. I didn't oh, go to the right terminal, there, but it's in the browser. That's even better. That works too. Uh, that's the the plugin for Vite uh, helping us out. Hmm. So it's providing us with some some context here. The first argument to text is not what I expect. Greet value is something, but text needs the first argument to be a string. And then the second one is where we just change something. So greet name equals hello plus name. The plus operator only works with integers and float values. Hint, switch to the plus plus operator to append strings. Nice. So this, this is one of the really nice features of the Elm compiler is it's trying its best to be super helpful and friendly. It's not just going to return invalid syntax and throw you some errors that you have to go look up on Stack Overflow or something. It's going to do its best to explain what's going on. So we, we can see the two errors that we were having there. One is we're not concatenating with the concatenate string method. The other is, now we can see it even clearer, this greet value is a string to string. So it's, what it's saying there is with the type system, it's expecting a string and it returns a string, but text needs the first argument to be just a string. So what we need to do is provide an argument to greet, uh, just in, just like we declared in its uh, declaration. So we can say html.text greet, and then you can say chat or name or Bob. No, so that's not the syntax. I was so, no, that is that is it actually. But because html.text expects only one argument, oh. we need to wrap greet chat in parentheses. Okay, treating it as like a singular expression that can be resolved. Right. Hey, we're go. back. We're back. I can I can go in and I can change this to say like hello, Lindsay, and that works. Also, that is reloading very quickly. Like it's loading much yes. faster than I can actually switch between windows. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty fast. And part of that is also that V is just amazing to work with. Uh, but yeah, the Elm compiler is pretty quick, all things considered. So let's dive back into the code. I want to show off one more thing while we're talking about strings. Uh, and that is a cool concept in functional programming of partial application. So let's update our greet function to take two arguments of first name and last name. Is it uh, like this, like just space separated? Just like that. Okay. Yep. And then let's update to, to do concatenation on both of those. It's not automatically going to add spaces, right? It um, is not. Okay. So you'll, you'll have to do that manually. Cool. So at this point, our greet function is incorrect in our main function, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's create another function underneath, and we can call this one, uh, I don't know, greet Lindsay. And just and have it take a last name and have it equal greet Lindsay. Okay. So what we have done now, uh, it, it won't, don't, don't switch to anything, but what we have done now is greet the function takes two arguments, first name and last name. And by saying greet Lindsay, we have created a function, which is called greet Lindsay, that only takes one argument and then finishes uh, the function mm. call. So if we do something like in main.htm, or in the main function, change that to greet Lindsay instead of greet, and then put my last name, we're done. In the JavaScript space, oh, I believe wait, that- there is there is one piece I'm oh, forgetting, I think. We do need to use that last name. So greet Lindsay last name. 
Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yep. Sorry, that was my bad. Uh, not, not, a, not concatenating, just passing it in as an argument. Ah, right, no. okay. No, 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 yeah. sorry, we don't need to. Ah, I'm forgetting things. My apologies to everyone watching. We don't need last name here because we're doing the partial application, so we can delete last name altogether uh, from the second greet Lindsay. Okay, so like this. Just like that. Just like that. Mm. And if we go back to our browser, we should say, hello, Lindsay Wardell. Okay. Oh, oh, nice. Okay, there very cool. And Yeah, in, I, I was messing up, my bad. In an immediate breach of, of naming here, if I had replaced this with... Yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah. So I believe in JavaScript spaces. First of all, it's not nearly as easy to do partial application, but I believe this is what in JavaScript spaces we might call currying. Wow, that's hard yes. to say. Currying. There we go. Currying. Yeah, same basic idea. Just, I think this is far cleaner of a way to do it. Yeah. And so you can you can stack this uh, if, if you have like a complex function that you want to pass down to lower in your, your function tree. Then you can you can prepare it by passing in most of its arguments, but not the last one, and then pass it down mm. rather than having to provide everything up front or pass an event all the way to the top that's then called at the at the top level of your application. So it can make some function calls a lot simpler uh, when you're working in submodules, for example. Gotcha. And this is nice too, because like, yeah, it, it allows you to like a way to provide, I think, a smoother API where, for instance, you could have a lot going on, maybe a lot of possible configurations getting passed around, but then there's like, the version of the API that's like the sensible defaults that you would need in most cases. So you could partially apply most of those defaults, and then the one configuration that's mandatory is, you know, the, the, the function that you actually end up using. You still have all of those other functions with all the other configurations, but there's also just the smoother API. I'm thinking of, of basically this as a replacement to everything that Redux is doing with like, Redux has its connect API, but that's actually mm -hmm. like a, a smooth layer over connect advanced, which is uh, like so many more arguments. Like this is a way to do that basically. Yeah. And actually, if you dig into the history of Redux, uh, I believe Redux was inspired by Elm. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. Uh, so so there, is, there is some lineage there between Redux and Elm and, and the other Flux libraries, honestly. Mm-hmm. So, All right. Kind of interesting. So let's let's move on to our next piece. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, how we would do things to strings. So, for example, in JavaScript, if you are uh, wanting to call, uh, I can't think of a good example off the top of my head. If if you're wanting to, so let's let's do numbers instead, actually. So first off, numbers in Elm, if you're wanting to do basic addition, subtraction, and stuff, that works exactly as you would expect. So if you want to do 1 plus 1, it will return to uh, one, 1 minus 1 will return 0, things like that. The, the main difference in Elm to JavaScript is that Elm has two different number types. There is an integer and there is a float. Uh, so if you're doing division, for example, then you have to think about Am I using integers or am I using floats? What do I need to convert from an integer to a float or vice versa? Mm -hmm. uh, something to keep in mind. We're not going to be actually doing that kind of math. I just wanted to explain it real quick. Okay. But let's let's handle some numbers here, for example, with our greet function. Or we could, yeah, yeah, let's use the greet function. So let's change it back to just greet name and simplify things. We don't need the whole thing. And yeah, perfect. But let's add a second argument of, I don't know, let's do favorite number. So at this point, uh, let's do plus plus for concatenation and then uh, some parentheses and go to a new line. So we're going to do an if statement and we're going to just show off a little bit with numbers. So yeah, so if favorite number is equal to uh, 17, which is my favorite number, 
Okay, is that double equals? Is that what's going double on? Double equals, yeah. Okay, okay. So, at this point, rather than where JavaScript would break into uh, curly brackets, we just say then. So, if this, then do something. And we can say in quotes. Okay. Uh, sure. Because we're, we're returning a string here, because we're concatenating. Say something like, that's my favorite number too. You know, whatever whatever's comfortable. Okay, so cool. just just like this, just like that, and let's go look at the browser real quick. And it's gonna yeah, because we haven't actually passed a number. Oh, it's oh. also complaining about the tab. Uh, so, uh, okay. this is this is another piece about the uh, the Elm formatting is it expects uh, four spaces. Uh, and actually, because you have the Elm tooling installed, if you do save, it might do an auto format. I think I I think I actually disabled that in my VS Code. Um, oh, okay. Then let's not uh, worry about it. But okay, just a thing to keep in mind. Yes. Uh, so let's jump back. Cool. I was expecting to see an else branch after this. I know what to do when the condition is true, but what happens when it's false? Add an else branch to handle that scenario. So this is one of those guarantees about a reliable web app. If Elm sees that you're doing an if statement, the other the other side of that if statement has to return something too. And okay. it has to be the same type. So in this case, because if the favorite number is 17, then we're returning a string. We also have to return a string with the else branch. So okay. let's go back and just add something like else. Uh, that's a cool number or something like that. Can I do that on a new line like this? You can do that on a new line, yep. Oh god, that's a, that's a habit I I would uh, oh, have yeah, to yeah. break. Unfinished parentheses. Um, it might just be that the paren is on is not at the same tab. The the new one. The... Yeah. Sorry. So I'm... push that in by four spaces. Oh oh oh, oh that's okay. That was not ex how I was expecting. God. Okay. And finally, and now and now our greet function is not doing what it expects anymore. So okay, so I'll say in whatever number you'd like. Greet fourteen, hello Wardle. That's a pretty cool number, friend. And if I go back and say, with seventeen, uh, that's Elm's favorite number too. Woo. All right. So yeah, so that's how that's how an if statement works, and that's how you can do basic things with numbers. Um, it's fairly similar to JavaScript, uh, plus, minus, multiplication, subtraction, comparisons. I, I can't think of an example where things are weird between the two, except that integers and floats are a thing, as opposed to just JavaScript numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's do one more fun thing here, and let's look at lists. So in our Hello World file, we don't need to go there. Uh, but we saw that div, for example, the, the div function took two arguments of lists. So let's do that here. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So we're going to do the same thing. And up here, instead of returning HTML.txt as the thing, we're going to do HTML.div. And the first argument is the list of attributes, which we're not doing anything with. And then the second list would be our actual content. OK. So let's let's just do the same thing that we were doing. Yeah. Uh, we, are, we do need to return text still. So HTML.txt. OK. And that's just like this. Um, just like that. And then put in here, let's say, three, we'll say Lindsay and 12. Great. Cannot find the end of the list. Oh, oh. because the, the last bracket is not indented the same. That is a choice. It's, it is a choice. Um, and this is where Elm format comes in to to help. Yeah. Uh I need to 
to turn that on, I think. Um, here, Command Shift P, and then Format on Save. No. Okay. Uh, might be able to just right click on the file and do Format too, or yeah, in there. I think yeah. I think it might be yeah. having issues because we we installed this live instead of like restarting oh, the yeah. editor, but. Okay, it's it's fine. I will I will live with it, but I'm sure the experiences for for default VS Code when you've got this all installed and it's settled. I'm sure that's oh command comma. Uh, yeah, there we go. Format on save. Uh, thank you. One more layer. You are a hero. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let, yeah. Let's put that to the limit here. Uh, put that put that to the test. Um, yes. No. Okay. Interesting. Oh, no. Let me let me just restart code and and meanwhile you can okay. talk us to what the next piece of the uh the stream is. Sure. So the next thing we're going to do is uh we're going to make a list of records. So I want I want to get through the uh the main types of uh Elm compared to JavaScript stuff. So we've looked at lists, we've looked at strings, we've looked at numbers, we've looked a little bit at booleans. Uh, in that we did an if statement. Um, but let's explore what... Not... Yeah, I, I think that's fine. That's fine. Yep. That's fine. Uh, but the last thing we need to look at to match what we know with JavaScript is a record. Um, and a record is just like a JavaScript object, okay. except... And what this is something to keep in mind for everything we've been doing. All values are immutable in L. So there is no mutable state. Um, okay. So if we're going to create a record, we're not going to be changing it anytime soon. Mm. We can update it and re and get a new record, but we can't update the existing one. Gotcha. So let's create a new function called people, and people is going to return a list of people. Makes um, sense. So just people equals, and then uh, square brackets. And within those square brackets, we are going to put uh, two people. So let's just let's just put you and me, Ben. Okay. Uh, so first we'll do curly brackets, and we'll say name for the for the person's name. Name equals in this case instead of a colon. Name equals Lindsay. Uh, in quotes and comma, nice. and then no, let's just say number equals 17. And then, am I doing this right? Like, this feels yep, fairly right. fairly JSON uh, with, yes. with uh, equals instead of colons, but okay. Favorite number, yep. I'm just, or I guess it's just going to be number in this case. Yeah, uh, I was just simplifying. I'll make that 14, because why not? Why not? Okay, so what we are going to do at this point is render this list of people out uh, instead of just the HTML.txt. We're gonna we're gonna use this list of people and use a map function to turn it into what we want. Okay. Uh, this is going to feel very familiar if you've used React or uh, used the map function in JavaScript before. Uh, the main difference is, unlike in JavaScript, uh, because Elm is not object oriented, it doesn't have uh, inheritance, it doesn't have prototypes or anything. We can't just call people.map or something like that. We need to call a list function, list.map. Okay. So in our main function, delete the second uh, array altogether, or the second list. And in parentheses, uh, call list, capital L, dot map. And do another set of parentheses. And in this case, we're going to do, making sure I'm saying it right, a backslash. So this is how we do a Lambda function in, uh, in Elm. So just say backslash person. Did I choose the right slash? I can never remember you, which you slash did. is yeah. right. Okay. I don't know if I said the right one, but that's the one I meant. Okay. So. We're, we're on the same page. Cool. And then we're going to do a small arrow. So JavaScript uses equals and bracket. We're going to do that. Yep. 
um, space, and then we can call our uh, HTML.txt just like we've been doing. And then uh, one more set of parentheses, and then we'll call greet person.name person.number. And then the last thing we need inside the yellow brackets, uh, the yellow parentheses, is our list of people. OK. So what are we doing here? We have a, a function, people, which is returning a list with two items, Lindsay and Ben. And then we are using list.map to map over that and return a list of HTML. We're taking person as an argument and then passing its name and number in as arguments to greet. So on the screen now, we should see two uh, hellos. It's gross. It's not formatted, but it works. <laughs> All right. And the goal here was the goal here was more to see how uh, functions on lists work. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these kinds of functions. So if we wanted to convert a string or a, a number to a string, for example, we could call string dot from int or string dot from float. Ooh. You can do the same thing the other direction: string dot to int or string dot to float. Um, there's list dot map. There's list dot sort by. There's list dot reverse. So that's some of the fun stuff that we can do with lists. And if we wanted to format this better, we could replace the HTML dot text with actually returning a div that returned text to get them on different on different layers. Uh, are okay. any HTML elements valid? Like, can I do a, a paragraph tag? You can. Uh, it does still need to hold text. Oh. So if oh. you're going to return string a string to the browser, it needs to have HTML.txt. OK, so how would I wrap this in a div then? It's Or, or a paragraph. It would be like this, and then HTML.p, and then, and then another uh, set of parentheses. So right. first, you would need the uh, the first set of square brackets for the list of attributes, uh, and then you would need a second list, of, or yeah, a second set of square brackets for the content instead of parentheses. Interesting. And then, if I I feel like I've gotten the nesting wrong here, but I think I think it is. Yeah. Um, put a parenthesis outside the square. Yeah. There we go. That should work. Hey. Pretty sharp. Nice. So one last thing I want to play with, just to show uh, one of the cool fun features of Elm, since I'm, I'm watching the clock and I see we're close to time, is we can, uh, let me back up. Have you heard of the pipeline operator, Ben? Yes. So this is, my, my summary of it is um, basically, you pass a value to a function, and then you pass the return value of that into another function, and so forth. And you can keep chaining it, um, as opposed to like wrapping things in function calls in function calls in function calls. Is that are right. we talking about the same thing? Yep, that's exactly it. So let's do something a little similar, uh, but in Elm. So Elm does have a pipeline operator. Okay. And one of the really cool use cases for it is when you have a list of things or you have a, an object or something and you want to pass it through a pipeline of changes. OK. So we're going to see how that works. And we're going to try uh, words. So what we're going to do is take our list of people. We're going to sort them by the, the favorite number. OK. And then we're going to display the person on the screen as HTML. So let's change our function just a little bit. Could you break it out to a new line? Yeah. Uh, and actually, do you want me to comment this so we can hold on to it and maybe start yeah. a new? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so main, and then I assume we're starting with our HTML div here and passing yeah, uh, it. Main equals, but yes. Uh, main equals, yes. Um, pass it so, empty attributes. Let's just go to the second line now just to make okay. this a little smaller. Uh, four spaces. And an open paren. And then we're going to do people, uh, which is our people array. And then under that, uh, go to the next line. 
uh, sorry, the, the words, the end per eng is going to be at the very end of everything. Perfect. So go over the next line, four more spaces to get indented. And then we're going to do the, the pipe and a right angle bracket, just like that. So that's going to make, uh, it's going to make a triangle shape is the goal. Yeah, and this is, I believe, the exact same uh, operator, like like down to the characters that um, is coming to JavaScript, I believe. Uh, if you follow the PC thirty nine proposals. Yep. the The main difference we're going to see between the the TC thirty nine proposal and this one is that uh, the the special character you need to to inject the the returned va value mm. doesn't exist. So whatever uh, our last argument is. Is going to be where the the return mm. value ends up as the argument to the next function. Interesting. Yeah, because JavaScript has like this uh, concept of like the the question mark, which is like um, you take you apply whatever the return value from the previous step of the chain was, and it's like a, a question mark. I think is what they're considering, um, or maybe it's like a caret. Might be the caret now. Yeah, I I've seen yeah. a couple different proposals. But it lets you basically say like you 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 could choose where in the argument list you wanted to apply it. Um, right, like that. But uh, you're saying that Elm doesn't have anything like that. It's it, it's equivalent to always passing it in here at the very end, no matter what. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and this works really well for for piping a value of, that's going to either be changing its shape as you go, or just something that you want the same shape and you want to apply a bunch of functions to. Yeah. So if you're familiar with the uh, array options or the array functions in JavaScript. You might do a list dot sort dot reverse dot map dot some, you know something like that, and you're just calling it one after the other. It's the same idea as what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, so in this case, we're first going to call list dot sort by uh, camel case. Uh, just like that, you got it. And then we're going to have another lambda function. So parentheses backslash uh, person. And all we're doing here is pro providing the key to the list dot sort by that we want to sort the array or sort the list by. Okay. So let's do the arrow and then let's just sort by number. So it's person dot number. Yep. And next line. And let me just. And do another yeah. uh, triangle. Just getting my spaces all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I. Maybe maybe I need to go in and unset this, but I, I was very insistent to VS Code, like, no, you will always insert tabs, and it's crushing me now that, like, this is not a tab language. Um, I, I think you can change the down at the bottom right with the, the tab size, right? If you click on that, you can change it per file. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Convert to spaces. Now it's going to be spaces four for now. Okay. Um, so let's just do list start reverse now. And that just takes in a list and reverses it. So that's, there's no additional arguments there. Right, because so we'll it's already received. Line. Like this, this is an array. Oh, yeah. This returns an yes. array. And then that array gets passed here. So we don't need to say, yeah, OK. Exactly. Uh, so we'll do one more here. And now we're going to do our list.map, where we uh, return some HTML. So you can just copy it from from the commented out one too. It's, okay. It's the same. That was uh, this up here. I think uh, mm -hmm. there we two go. more symbols, please. Yes. Yep. That's cool. It. Perfect. So now what we're doing is we're sorting by the number. We're reversing that, and then we're mapping over it and okay. turning it into HTML. So if we go to our screen, we should see it in some order. Which in this case is no different, but if we remove the list dot reverse, uh, oh, it will okay. be putting Ben first instead of Lindsay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. By the so way, I, yeah, I, I just gotta I say, I see that we are close to time. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably as far as we're going to get at the moment. But this, this, I hope gave a taste of some of the syntax and some of yeah. how Elm works to to help you as a developer. Yeah. Um, and then as you as you build out the application. Um, it continues to help you as you go. So as things scale, Elm is able to keep in mind, oh, this you have a value over here that's this type, needs to be that type over here. As you make changes to your API like we were doing with Greet, 
it will warn you these are all the places that you need to fix it. So it becomes a lot more uh, straightforward to do a large refactor than if mm. you were just working in something like TypeScript where uh, it'll tell you in that specific file, but it might not tell you in all of the files and things might still compile depending on how you set your configuration. And especially in JavaScript where you don't get any of that benefit. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so like you said, this was just a taste of Elm, right? Uh, where would you recommend folks go if they were interested in learning more about Elm and really picking this up to use it like in more fully featured applications and such? So there are three different resources I would point you at. The first, let me make sure I have the links up. The first is the Elm website. Uh, right there on the side, uh, under Delightful Language for Reliable Web Apps, there is a guide, and that will walk you through uh, the basics of Elm and how to do things. So as we were going here, we were kind of walking through the same basic concept, but so you'd be able to pick it up from the start and learn more about Elm as you go. Um, can learn about the Elm architecture, which is how app full applications that take user input are handled. Uh, learn more about types and error handling, how to do more complex things like HTTP requests. So this is a very good resource to start with. The second one I would mention is called Beginning Elm, uh, which is at elmprogramming.com. Elm programming, that's no hyphens or anything like that, Elm programming? No, no, no hyphens, just okay. elmprogramming.com. So this bills itself as a gentle introduction to the Elm programming language. This is very similar in concept to the Elm guide, but goes a bit more in depth. Okay. Uh, so they help you with building a simple web application and walk you through some of the key features um, with an actual example. So that is a great resource. If you want to take it, another resource uh, that I would recommend, this is on manning.com. It is the book Elm in Action by Richard Feldman. Okay. Elm in uh, action. I'm just yeah. gonna Richard Feldman. I'm just gonna Google it and see what uh, comes up. Here we go. There it is. Nice. So yeah, Richard also works at No Red Ink, and this is an excellent book for getting started. Uh, unlike the other ones, other guides that are are focused on getting across key concepts, this has you working on a single application from start to finish. Okay. And it, it hands you requirements and piece by piece steps so that you're able to start implementing them in Elm and learn as you go. So definitely recommend this book. Uh, I have a copy myself that I enjoy looking at. Um, yeah, uh, I think Alex has just recommended elmprogramming.com again. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So these this is fantastic. And then... Um, yeah, so you, you've been working on some tools for the Elm ecosystem as well. Like we use today your Vite template, um, but you've got some other things you've been working on, right? Yeah, so the Vite template is first, uh, and that was specifically because I needed a way to write Elm apps in Vite. Uh, I really like the Vite ecosystem, and I wanted that integration as closely as possible. So that was, that was the first one. The second thing that I would mention uh, is called Elm View Bridge. Okay. And what that is, uh, yeah, you should be able to get to it that way. Yeah. Uh, so Elm View Bridge is a tool, if you are somebody who writes in Vue and you want to try out Elm, it is a way for you to render Elm modules inside of your Vue application. Uh, so if you want to, for example, just try out Elm, some of the things that we were doing and render it inside of Vue, this provides you a wrapper function so that you can take your Elm code, turn it into a view component, and inject it into your, your view template, just nice. like you normally would. Uh, it also provides some nice uh, utility if you want to integrate a view and an Elm app together uh, using the view API a little bit closer. So for example, you'd be able to pass in props and listen to events being emitted from the wrapped Elm module as if it was a normal view component. Very cool. So, that would be my second suggestion if you're wanting to look at some of the things I've been working on. Awesome. Um, well, Lindsay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for, for showing us Elm. Y'all, go go show Lindsay some love. Go follow her on, on Twitter. Um, this has been great. Um, 
Next week, we're going to have Alex Riviere on. Um, you might have seen him around the internet as Fimian. Uh, we are going to be making some terrible web components, and I mean terrible. Um, his whole thing is building stuff that harkens back to the GeoCities aesthetic, um, and so it is going to be absolute nonsense. If you like nonsense, you'll want to be there next week, uh, 2 p.m. Central, um, next Tuesday. Um, and y'all, stick around. We're going to go raid. Uh, sounds like Adrian's on, so we're, we're going to go raid him. Um, and y'all, thank you so much for being here. Bye, y'all. See ya.